you start to question your value. You start to question your self-worth. Like the more money you got, the more successful you are, and most people really do buy into that. But really, I just needed a break. What I love is helping people. I'm Julie Bauke, and welcome to The Evolved Career, a podcast where we help you determine what truly does matter most to you and how it can have a profound impact on your life. Today, I welcome Dan Carruthers. Welcome, Dan. Well, thank you, Julie. I'm happy to be on the show. I've been waiting for you to ask me. So, <laughs> I know. Since so I many see you are. every day. Yes. So many are so waiting. Many are. It's a long line. Yes. I know. So I have to, you know, I always, one of the things I always want to ask people is like, how do you describe yourself professionally? So mm. I went on your LinkedIn profile mm-hmm. and I loved your, kind of your title, what you called yourself. So I'm going to mm. read it because it's so beautiful. Okay. Working with brands, artists, and creatives to create and capture sonic works that leave a lasting emotional impression. Okay, hold on while I dry my tears. That is so beautiful. <laughs> um, is that did you make did you did you write that yourself? Um I would say that the team wrote it okay. because it's sort of our mission okay. of how we want to serve all of our clients, whether they're brands, musicians. Okay. And what's your current role? My current role is the CEO of Gwyn Sound. Okay, and what is Gwyn Sound? Yeah, so Gwyn Sound, we're a music and sound agency that really specializes in four main verticals. Uh, number one, uh, sonic identity. So we develop um, sonic strategy for brands. Uh, number two, podcast. So what we're doing here today, um, artist recording. So music artists from uh, locally and around the world have recorded here. And then audio post, which is sound design, VO, dialogue replacement for uh, television, film, and digital. So we capture sonic works on behalf of all these clients across these various verticals that drive a deeper emotional connection with their respective audiences, like you sort of referred to earlier. I love my favorite phrase in all that was capture sonic works. Right. I had to actually go to my Google Mm -hmm. and um, say, now what (laughs) is, you know, sonic? Because we hear about... You know, the Sonic, the drive through <laughs> We hear about mm-hmm. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes. But Sonic really means sound, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I think we wanted to keep it broad that way, Capture Sonic Works, because we wanted it to apply yeah. to all our different customers. I love that. Yeah, thanks. So when you, when you think about your career, all the different mm-hmm. ways you've shown up, all the different things that you've done, has Goodness. sound, some version of sound, been a part of your career, your whole career? Hmm. You know, that's a really good question. Um, There's a roundabout way to answer that. I would say directly, no. Indirectly, yes. Um, I have been a musician since I learned how to play guitar in high school, I guess, my senior year. My brother taught me. He was a phenomenal musician. My my story starts with him. Okay. Because he inspired myself and then generations of our family to be involved in music and sound. He was a tremendous... um, guitar player, singer, songwriter, but he left us really soon. He, he passed away of mul- from multiple sclerosis okay. complications when he was 33, which was a long time wow. ago, 1990. But so he um, taught me how to play. So I've always been, music has been always been a big part of my life. My children, my, my adult children are now professional musicians. Um, my little 12 year old, I think was, was probably get there one day. Um, but It's been involved indirectly, I would say, because um, it's always been the place that I have to go to when, um, you know, when my day is done. It's always there waiting for you. Okay. Uh, That's what I love about music and playing an instrument is um, you're never bored. Um, It's a challenge and you always have something to look forward to. And although I've had tremendous jobs, I've I've loved my occupation uh, on the different jobs that I've done, as you saw there in in LinkedIn, but Ron LinkedIn. But um, there's always this safety net of music and being able to play it. It's always been there that actually think complements and helps put you at peace and at a a good place for when you have to enter the workforce the next day. So let's go back and then come back forward. So, okay. so much everything of what you do now is around uh, music in some form. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your early career. Yeah. So my early career was um, I started with Unilever on the Thomas J. Lipton brand in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. 
back in the, we'll just call it the early 80s. Okay. 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 And uh, I was hired as a sales rep, essentially. And back in the day, um, when you worked for a CPG brand, there was a, there was actually retail sales. So I was driving around in my company car, which I thought I had the world by the tail. I had a, <laughs> a white K car, you know, they I got a car and they paid for the gas. And oh, it was tremendous. Total you know? chick magnet does K oh, cars my too, God. right? Yeah, I just, just could not keep oh, them away. fight them off. <laughs> So I got to see the Southwest United States too, which was with really cool. With tea in the back seat. With tea <laughs> and dry soup, you know, and all of the Lipton products. We Everything also had, you needed. Also wish, Just some water and you have it all. It was, it was amazing. So I drove around to retail stores and called on them and was selling displays and stuff like that. So that was my first job. So, so here you are in high school. You're picking up a guitar. You mm-hmm. love music. You love sound. At that point, did you consider music – as a possible career? I did. I When I got into college, I started to get a little bit of a following as a musician. Oh, wow. Okay. And I started to think about, could I do this? But then, you know, I think especially back in the day, the world was smaller because the internet didn't mm-hmm. exist, you know? And it just seemed like this far off possibility and you had to be at the right place at the right time and you needed a record deal. And today anybody can make a record, you know? Yeah. So, so I mean, I, I think about, I've been reading about people who have some sort of artistic bent, whether it be with a written word or music or visually, and that as well-meaning parents, well, that's great, but how are you going to make a living? Mm-hmm. You know, kind of snuff it out of you right. when you're younger and you're discouraged mm-hmm. from those well-meaning adults around you as a child from actually making something from your art. Beautifully said. And that was certainly the dynamic in my household. Okay. Um, and, you know, it wasn't like today you could say, yeah, but if I got a million YouTube followers, yeah. mom, I can actually make X amount of money, you yeah. know, or there's all these other different avenues, you know. Whereas back in the day, oh, really, you're going to run into somebody, you're going to run in, you're going to be at the right place at the right time, yeah. and an A&R person from a label is going to see you and then think you're good enough, and then you're going to make a record, and then they're going to support yeah. it, and then the record's going to do great. Is that really what's going to happen? So our parents you know? weren't entirely wrong, were they? They weren't entirely wrong. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah. So, but, but it's, yeah. it's interesting. You had that interest, mm-hmm. and I love how you've come full circle You know, after that temporary stop in soup yeah. and tea and salad yeah. dressing and whatever else you were selling. <laughs> but um, Then coffee. Then coffee. Got, yeah, then Millstone Coffee. Okay. I went from there to Millstone Coffee, which was really cool. Yeah. Because that's Coffee's what brought me cooler. to Cincinnati. Okay. Definitely cooler. So then I went to work for this gourmet coffee company. And back in the day, it's like, you know, in the, in the now in the in the mid to late 80s, what's gourmet coffee? You know? Well, yeah. we sold, we were the first to put whole bean coffee in supermarkets. And that really opened up my world. And then I had a couple of promotions and they moved me to Cincinnati to run the central region of the U.S., and then I was our company was acquired by Procter and Gamble, so okay. that's how the story came through. And then I went to work for Procter and Gamble, and I was there for eleven years. Okay, as well. okay. So. so it's interesting because undoubtedly, except for those hours in which you were working for your employer, mm-hmm. music, yes, some type of music sound was. Your life. It was because not only was I playing music, but you know, those long road trips up to places like uh, Sholo, Arizona, you know, and uh, gosh, some, what, what else? There's so many different places. Albuquerque, New Mexico, and you got these long drives. What do you do? Yeah. You know, for me, yeah. it was I listened to music the entire time. I'd sing to the radio. I'd put my cds in Uh i would just sing every album and work on my craft that way think about lyrics to songs you know so it was always there Mm -hmm. yeah so here you are working in the consumer packaged goods industry in you know all kinds of you know coffee and all kinds of other great stuff at what point did you say you know i'm gonna switch i'm Mm -hmm. gonna make my avocation more of my vocation what was that moment? Good question. I think it was a slow transition. It was around, I think it was 2003 when I was like, I need to be in a more creative endeavor. Okay. I will say this much. I owe so much to Procter & Gamble for everything that I learned there. It was incredible. Such talented people and the, the marketing discipline mm-hmm. and the training that you received. It was just phenomenal. But I felt there was a creative part of me that wasn't being expressed as much as it could be. 
Um, and they, they kind of got that too. When we, we would have meetings and they would ask me to write, you know, a song and I would play it at the meeting in front of a bunch wow, of people and we'd, awesome. I, we'd create <laughs> these different spoofs. I wrote a, a jingle for coffee, you know, and then I became the spokesperson for the brand. So I was in the television commercials and stuff like okay. that. Um, but I felt like I wanted to be in a little bit more creative role. So that's when I went on the creative agency side and I went to work for MKTG, which was an experiential a primarily experiential agency based out of New York, but they had a Cincinnati office, and um, I, I ran that for a while, which was great. I was actually there for 11 years in various roles, but ultimately the GM and mm -hmm. VP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you're, yeah. So, so more so, creative then, right? And, yeah. And then now all of a sudden you're working alongside creatives every day, inspiring yeah. them, helping, contributing. And I felt like that's when I started to feel a little bit more like a musician again. Yeah. Um, and that sort of led me then to get to this place where it was time after 11 years of that i consulted for a little bit and now i felt like okay what am i going to do next and then the opportunity to acquire sound images and turn it into gwyn sound arose and I, I couldn't have been more excited now i had really reached the pinnacle now what inspired me was also going to be something that uh, where i existed every every yeah. day so my uh my passion and my experience finally came together. Yes, and that yeah. that is very well said. It's sometimes when you're driving around Arizona, you know, with tea in the back seat, you're wondering <laughs> why am I doing this? You know, I'm sure you had those days where like, oh my gosh, you know, singing in yeah. the car is just not enough. Right. <laughs> but one of my favorite expressions is you had to be there to be here. Mm -hmm. And everything that you learned brought you back around. So I like the visual of having buckets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you were working for Unilever, you had you know, your, it was your your job. You were being paid on a regular basis for it. And your art bucket or your creative bucket, your sound bucket was had some had had some in it, but it was really what you could squeeze in outside of everything else. Exactly. Right? But yeah. then it's so then you come here, you're working for PNG, they recognize that you've that that you've got this talent and interest, and so they can go and tap you for those sort of things. Mm -hmm. And so even while still working in your J-O-B job, you got to fill the creative bucket up a little bit, a mm -hmm. little bit more, a yeah. little bit more. Then you started, you know, you worked with more creative people. So pretty soon it was fuller and fuller, and it allowed you to say, okay, this is the bucket I want to focus on filling. But you had done the work to get it to the point where you were ready and had the confidence that you could actually make a career out of this. And so that was that pivot point in which you said, okay, it's time for me to to go big or go home pretty much. You nailed it. And if I hadn't had that experience, I wouldn't have known how to manage the business side of what we do here. Yes. Yeah. It would have been also the experience in managing people, which I love, which was probably the thing that was probably best at. Because, um, and that came from just me being in a bunch of sports teams growing up. I played college baseball. I love being a part of a team. And I don't think there's a big difference between being on a sports team and a business team. Mm -mm. You know, everybody still has roles to play. You have to support each other. You have to have this sort of unconditional love and support for one another and believe in each other and pump each other up when they need it and kick each other about when you need that too. And um, so it all prepared me for this. You're, mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. And 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 if I hadn't gone through those experiences, I wouldn't have been ready because uh, it wouldn't have been a 360 sort of, uh, you know, uh, understanding of what I needed to do. Yeah. And it's 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 it, this whole thing about getting what you want out of your career. It's it's part art and part science. You know, you have to be following. You have to know where you're headed. You have to know what you love. And you have to fill your life with as much of it as you can, given your situation and what life requires of you. But. It's that opportunity to add to that as you move through time, finding those opportunities, putting your hand up and saying, yes, I think I'm going to try that. I'm going to take that on. And that makes for some periods of life that are really busy, especially when you're raising children. Mm -hmm. um, and But to get to that place in which you're going to be is your best and highest use, it requires some of that. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, and I'm, I feel that every single day. And I had a lot to learn. I was excited about that, too. There was something that I was bringing to the table, mm -hmm. and there was something that the employees that were already here, you know, Bart included, and of course, Adam and Sam. And I loved being in a position where I needed to learn from them, 
too. I'm not one of those kind of people that come in and pretends that they know everything. I knew I was entering in an industry, uh, in an area that I was passionate about, but I, I didn't know yeah. as much as I needed to know. Yeah. So it was really wonderful how I was able to uh, be teacher and student all in the same experience, and I think good for them too. Yes, yes, absolutely. So you said that um, your children are professional mm-hmm. musicians, mm-hmm. and so it sounds like you never told them that a career in music wasn't possible. No, I went exactly the opposite route, yeah. and they still condemn me for it, actually. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> you say, hey, you, you could be selling tea. So, yeah. <laughs> That's true. No, they they love it. It's just hard, you know. But it's, it's harder to be a musician today, even though it, maybe it was hard to get going. Everybody's in it today, but it's harder to really make a living at it. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. probably one of the few vocations where they pay less than they did in the 80s. Well, know? yeah, I was just thinking that. So back when you were thinking about it, it was it, – it's almost changed like five or six times it between has. now and then. It has. You know, back the, back then, you, people still paid for music. Yeah. You know, now it's it's available everywhere essentially for free. Yeah. I can tell you from experience. So when I was working for Lipton, right, and I would come home from the road, then I would go do a gig. And I was getting paid more money then – before my children were born, wow! Than they are now, and so it's incredible. There's, yeah. it's, there's just, it's a supply and demand thing. Also, be, the internet has also created this world where it's easier to get information and learn stuff. And now there's tabs on the people go, and just about everybody can get whatever they need. Yeah. So you got so many more people yeah. that are in the game. You yeah. know, not everybody's great. Yeah, uh, but there's, there's more, and there's more to choose from. So now you've got. So your core bucket, your professional bucket is filled with running a sound studio and everything that comes with that. So how do you spend your time outside of everything that it takes to run your studio? Um, I guess the other bucket is it's I, I'm at a point in my career and and my wife has is uh, was at PNG for for many, many years too and 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 she's still actively employed. Um, so I think there's a give back portion. And so I'm also serving on a couple of boards. Oh. One is um, a film Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. which I've been on for a little over a year, and then another one called uh, the Music Resource Center, MRC. Okay, what do they do? Which is phenomenal. Um, we essentially inspire youth through music, and and there's, um, I would say, primarily um, at-risk youth. Uh, we bring them in where they can get music lessons, learn about uh, recording, et cetera, and it's like an after-school program, essentially. Oh. And we also feed them. They also get a okay. hot meal. For some of the kids that, that we support, it might be their own, the only one of the day for them. So we do really wonderful work and wonderful work for the community. So it's it's not only are we enriching the lives of these, these teenage kids, but we're also enriching the community because they're not on the street and they're learning an endeavor that they're going to be able to, to use for the rest of their life, either personally for, for enrichment that way or professionally. So it's a really wonderful organization. So I see you as like throughout your life – like your career, you have worn a lot of different hats. Yes. Um, so you've got this big hat rack by your door. Uh, <laughs> when you go out the door, you you know it's you're playing a different role. Mm-hmm. Um, but all hats go on the same head. Yep. And so all roles that you fill are uniquely part of who you are. In which role or in which situation would we find the best version of you? I don't know if I'm the best judge of that because. How, where a, do you th- feel the most aligned? And what you're like, man, I got this. This yeah. is my sweet spot. You I was, know, get out of my way, people. Yeah, I, I think here. I That's think here because it is the combination of experience and passion. And now I'm gaining experience in my passion area as well. So now they're becoming one. Uh, I love this team. I love the work that we're doing. I really believe in it. We're, we're working in a couple of areas that are certainly emerging capabilities, especially in the area of sonic identity and sonic strategy. Uh, but then also in, in what podcasts. What is sonic too. identity? Mm-hmm. That sounds very, like, um, mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more mysterious than we want it to be. I can okay. tell you that. Um, every brand has a visual identity. Mm-hmm. We help them figure out what their sonic identity is, is what they sound like. And so we actually oh, take cues, right, from their their visual identity from their brand fundamentals. And we've created a tool, which is essentially an algorithm that takes cues from their visual identity and converts them into sonic attributes. And then we build music and sound for the brand that is truly on equity. So what they sound like is consistent with what they look like. You know, I love that because I was just thinking that when we started this podcast, um, you guys said we can write 
opening mm-hmm. music for you, and then you sent me a bunch of questions right. to answer. Mm-hmm. Like, if you could have any band do your opening, who would it be? And of course, mm-hmm. I'm like Talking Heads because I love Talking Heads. Right. And <laughs> you don't actually want to steal a Talking Heads song, but you want that vibe. You want that mm-hmm. that same identity. And and I thought the questions that you asked in in creating that sonic identity did not know I had a sonic identity. Apparently, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't even know that was a thing. Yep. And But I love the way how you got at that. And how you brought it all together. Uh, it's so Thanks. powerful. So I, you know, I love that. Is that, is that something that, is, is there much awareness of even what mm-hmm. that concept is? Yeah. Um, I, I think in the creation of your theme, that was like a, a shorter version of what we end up doing for brands. Um, because they're coming to us with tons of information that we can use. You know, with you, with in the, your case, we we're sort of pulling out uh, enough to be able to give you something that really worked for you. Yeah. Um, as far as how um, broadly recognized it is, it, I would it's it's still not there. So, for example, um, only twenty percent of brands actually have an audio archetype. So, really, whereas ninety seven percent of brands say that uh, music can strengthen their brand, only twenty percent of it. Twenty percent of them really come at it strategically. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is really interesting. That's wow, that's fascinating. Um, what were you doing about ten years ago today? Ten years ago today was really an interesting time because our the business that I was working for, so the company I was working for, MKTG, we were moving our offices from up in the Evendale area, which is not exactly the hotbed for uh, creative agencies. To, to downtown Cincinnati, and we were actually ended up in the Edge Building. So we're super excited about being in a new space. We had built the business with our uh, biggest client to, uh, gosh, 20, 30x what it was when, when we had started just a few years earlier. Uh, and my daughter uh, had just broken through on a show on MTV called Taking the Stage. So it was okay. a really exciting time for the family because she was getting a lot of exposure as a young musician. So it was a really, really fun time. Uh, and then I think and then we went down to Nashville and recorded her first her first record. And my son, Taylor, was also performed on the record. So it was an exciting time. Wow. Yeah. So now walk ahead 10 years. I yeah, know you don't have yeah. a crystal ball. Look ahead, 10. But, that's, um, that's a good what question. What do you imagine Dan will be doing in 10 years? Goodness. Um, maybe on a beach somewhere. Living off royalties uh, from your kids, making yeah. <laughs> them pay you back for all those music lessons you paid for. That would be really, really nice. I, I hope they that listen they're, they're listening. Yeah, yes. me too. Uh, gosh, that's good. You know, I, I know what I'm, I, I know one thing I'm going to be doing, and that's I'm going to be uh, playing music. And I'm going to be listening to music and because I knew in a very early age it was something that I would never stop doing as long as I could do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What would you tell somebody who just graduated from college? They're just entering the job market and they're itching to make an impact in the world. What advice would you give them? <sighs> Probably still give them the same advice I gave my kids, which was uh, – and, and it's, you know, it's been said, but – Follow your passion. What do, you, what do you love to do? And and go hard at it. Work really hard and figure out a way to make a living at it. It might be obvious in some cases, not so obvious in others. But then the other advice I would give them is that um, they have to, from the very beginning, take the approach of it's not about you. Mm-hmm. If you're always looking to make somebody else better, yeah. whether your company, your coworker, or whatever, and you come at it from a position of humility – that's going to be recognized and you're going to go a long way. You think that the shortcut is having it be about you. It's actually it being about others. Yes, yes. It's very hard to get people to see that sometimes, but mm-hmm. we all know people who uh, have lived many years and have not embraced that. Absolutely, don't we? Yes. yes. Answer this question. I'm at my best when? I've had enough sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sleep and coffee. <laughs> yes. And uh, I'm at my best when I have a new challenge. I'm at my best when I have a new challenge, something that I haven't, uh, has some nuance to it that I feel I've not, not had a chance to tackle that I'm excited about. And when that day comes and you are no longer on this earth and people who knew you were talking about you, how would you hope they complete the sentence? You know, the, I think the biggest impact Dan made on the world was what? 
he treated everybody the same and they recognized it. Mm -hmm. And he Mm -hmm. treated everybody with respect. Okay. Okay. So are you ready to play um, two questions, one deep and one shallow? Sure. Okay. All (laughs) right. So we'll go with uh, the shallow one first. Perfect. If you could give yourself your own nickname, what would it be? Oh, man. (laughs) We could ask your staff here. Uh, Danimal. (laughs) Danimal. <laughs> that animal <laughs> got that Bart. I think we got a new nickname for Dan. That's he said. That's not what we call him. He said there's no. something, but I don't think they can repeat. They can't what they repeat call it. you. No, no, no. I love. I've that. never heard it. They just told me they can't repeat. Yeah, that's it. all right. That's all right. I'm sure it's it's loving. I'm sure it's meant lovingly, no matter what it I'm is. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, what breaks your heart? People that are struggling, you know, to just either in, in any level. Um, social, socioeconomically, mentally, um, lonely people. Um, I think just pe- people in need yes. pe- and, and feeling helpless sometimes in your ability to help them. Okay. That's what breaks my heart. So how do we learn more about Gwyn Studios? Well, you can go to www.gwynsound.com. G-W-Y-N-N-E sound.com. You got it. That's a good place to start. Um, and how do we and, follow your kids? I mean, come on, yeah. make a daddy plug Gosh, here. Totally. Well, uh, Taylor Alexander Music. My son's out in Los Angeles being a singer-songwriter out there. My daughter is the uh, writer and lead singer for an awesome band called Passport, which is P-A-S-S-E. P-O-R-T. Okay. And they're just about to release um, their first record. And her name is? Which is great. Her name is Mia. Okay. And um, Mia Carruthers. Mia Carruthers, okay. yeah. And the band's Passport. My, my son is Taylor Alexander Carruthers, but he goes by Taylor Alexander. Uh, you can Google them. Um, I know them. Mia's going to be doing a show here. I do know that. Uh, Fantastic. The Woodward Theater on March 20th, great. which is going to be their CD release show. It's going to be fabulous. I would uh, highly encourage anybody to go out there and, okay. and check them out because they're well, that's great. great. And it's an all, it's definitely one of those, it's the type of music that's, that's there for all ages. And I would say my son too. He's kind of pop blues thing going on. It's really cool. They're both yes. great. They yes. really are. Fantastic. Not just a dad talking. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and they got it all from their mom. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. Well, thank you so much for thank your you, time Julie. sitting down yeah. uh, with us today. And I, I think you've given a lot of people inspiration to... No matter what your passion or interest is, the ability to hang on to it, have it be in some part of our lives, can enhance your life. You don't necessarily have to make a living at it, but you probably thought back in the early days of your career, you weren't going to make a living at it either, and here you are. That's Who exactly knew? right. Who knew? Exactly. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Julie. If you enjoyed meeting the Evolved Careerist on today's episode, well, we've got a lot more lined up for you. Subscribe, tell your friends, rate us and write a review. And of course, follow us on social media. But if you're interested in learning more about how you can evolve your career, you can contact us through theevolvedcareer.com or thebaukegroup.com. And that's B-A-U-K-E. Do you know somebody who'd be a great guest, who has a great career story to tell? Or do you think you qualify? Then email me. My email address is in the podcast description. Until next time, here's to your career happiness.